Well, a good Saturday to you. I hope you're having a great weekend. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist John Dawson. This is our tropical update. We've got it just for you ready to go. We can dive into things and talk a lot more in detail about what's happening in the Atlantic and things we're beginning to enter that busy period that we've been discussing for most of the year so far, talking about how active this season is going to be. And we're beginning to see that where we're just about every day going to have something to talk about out there. And that's certainly the case that we're dealing with right now. This is an area of disturbed weather, a tropical wave that the National Hurricane Center has has been monitoring for several days now, and it has officially been identified as an area of invest, which is that very first step that they kind of take when they've got a spot that they're really thinking could possibly develop into a tropical system that allows them to get all those computer models up and running and get going and really dive in to see where we think the system's going to be headed. And it is expected the National Hurricane Center at least expecting that this will become a tropical cyclone of some kind, at least a tropical depression. At this point, it does looking like maybe even a tropical storm and that in case it would actually get a name and we'll see this shaded area here as where it could potentially develop. So as we kind of take a little bit of a closer look at this again, as I mentioned, the National Hurricane Center officially giving it a 40% chance over the next two days, but as high as an 80% chance within the next week. So basically the way to look at this is a progression and basically this is right now. And as we move through the next several days, it continues to track to the west and eventually interacting with the Eastern Caribbean. And this is most likely when it would become more of a potential, at least for a tropical system. So as I mentioned with the Hurricane Center saying over the next two days, a 40% chance. And again, those are fairly high in the short term. So in the two day range, we're looking at, you know, movement to about this far still out into the Atlantic. We tack on another couple of days and we start getting to the Lesser Antilles and those very edges of the Caribbean. Uh, and then we get into uh, the island of Hispaniola and we get into the eventually Dominican Republic and then eventually and even into Cuba there where we're looking at the potential for where this would head again. We're talking about over the next seven days in this total red shading. So this is pretty far out in the Atlantic still a lot of time to watch this. And of course, at this point, we don't have any real confidence on where this ends up going, but we have some ideas and we kind of trust in those computer models just a little bit to a certain extent at least. And here's kind of what we know overall as we look at one of our specific models. This is going to be the American model or the GFS, and I'm going to go ahead and set this into motion. It takes a little while to start to start tracking that, but you see the blue there representing that extra bit of rain that's going to be happening. And then eventually we get this system developing and I've got this set up here where we're going to stop on Wednesday of this week. And you'll see that we've got a little bit of a swirl here with those heavier rain there. Uh, that's where we're looking at a possibility of a tropical depression or perhaps even a tropical storm. Now, after this point, our confidence lessens quite a bit on exactly what's going to be happening. We're going to have several different factors that are going to kind of come into play here. Uh, at this point, it doesn't look likely that this system could make it all the way into the Gulf of Mexico. So if you're like me sitting here in Texas, that's pretty good news. Again, not 100%, but that's what's looking favorable at this point, not going to make it into the Gulf of Mexico. But we've got high pressure over the Atlantic, and the position of that high pressure, the strength of that high pressure is really going to be the main factor that drives this system uh, on its on where it ends up going. Now, also, by the time we get to the mid portions of the week, we're probably going to have another frontal boundary, a cold front, a weak front that'll sort of stall out here, more or less kind of along Florida in the Bahamas. That also will be a little bit of a steering factor. But overall, once we get into the second half of the week, that's when we'll really have to determine is this system going to take more of a northerly track, which would be good for just about everybody, meaning that it takes it out into the Atlantic where we don't have a lot of people. Or 
will it end up getting pushed more just towards the southeastern portions of the U.S., whether that be Florida specifically or other portions along the southeastern coastline? There's a lot of questions there. Don't have a lot of confidence, but that's what we're tracking and that's what we're kind of watching. Now, the kind of wild card that we're going to kind of throw into that just a little bit is this Saharan dust, which is still out there. And you're going to notice as we go through time, this is more or less where we're looking at that tropical wave again. I'm backing this up to our current time and watch how you watch this swirl just a little bit where you've got a little bit of that less uh, dust. This is where we're thinking the system's going to be, whatever it is, and it's going to be act, interacting some with this dust. So again, when we get to Wednesday, remember we were sort of in this general area right here. So if it can kind of stay in this window where there's a little less dust, that's going to be beneficial to it. If it gets kind of stuck in here to this thicker dust, that's going to be a little bit more of a deterrent. And so that that's really going to interfere with its strengthening, which doesn't have as much to do with its steering components. Although generally speaking, a stronger storm will try to veer to the north more than a, a weaker storm. But again, overall, the steering components are are addressed by other things besides the dust. The dust will help kind of determine will it develop into a stronger system or a weaker system. In other words, a tropical depression or perhaps a tropical storm. And just a reminder where we are, of course, Debbie has been around very recently. That's been the last named storm. So Ernesto is going to be the next one that we're looking for. So at this point, I would say that the Invest 98L, which is that area I was just talking about, will become Ernesto at some point, I think that that's kind of where we're headed at this point, but we still got a little bit of time to uh, deal with that. I know that there are a lot of folks who, out there who are watching who are not in the United States all across the Caribbean. We've got a lot of viewers that check in with us. I'm glad you're here. Feel free to leave a comment below. Tell me where you're watching from. I'll go and take a look at those and see where, we're, where we are. It's great if you want to check back here regularly. Again, the Fox 26 YouTube channel is primarily how we interact. This, of course, is on our website as well. Either way, if you want to look up my hurricane preparedness videos, hurricane gear test is what we call those. On YouTube, search for meteorologist John Dawson. That's the best way to find me. And you can see all those gear tests <clears throat> really helping give you some ideas on how to stay prepared for this very active hurricane season. We'll be back again tomorrow, a little bit after four o'clock central time with our tropical update. I'll expect to see you then.